run pass situation going, maybe get Wimbush running the ball a little bit to soften up the defense. They focus on trying to gun on him. Maybe that opens the door for some of the wide receivers like Boykin, et cetera, to make some big plays, chase play pool. Uh, they got to find a way through that defense. If they can do that, then they can focus on stopping Shea Patterson. But if they can't get anything going on offense, uh, regardless of what Shea Patterson does, I just don't see a scenario where they can beat Michigan. Well, now we're going to go to the other Michigan uh, team, uh, Michigan State, uh, the home of Sparty, uh, if you will. They didn't make it to a bowl game. Uh, I mean, it, it, they after missing their bowl game in 2016, they, they have 19 uh, starters. Uh, from last year that won 10 games. Uh, Rick, is Michigan State good enough to contend in the Big Ten anymore, or are they just kind of a has-been? Uh, definitely. They're they're definitely good enough to contend in the Big Ten. I mean, Michigan can't beat them just yet, really, with under Harbaugh. Harbaugh's 1-5 and five against Michigan State and Ohio State, so uh, I think they're definitely good enough. Uh, Mark Antonio is a great coach, I and mean, he kind of follows that Nick Saban philosophy. Uh, where they they pound, beat you up with the run game, and they they have solid enough quarterbacks and great, pretty good to great defenses. Uh, I think they are one of the top four teams, five teams in, in the Big Ten. They can compete, and they've been close the past couple of years. And you always, in the past couple of years, you've heard some little – talk about them possibly making or being right on the outside looking into the playoff and uh, I think with the way Wisconsin and Penn State has come up and we'll see what happens with Ohio State and I think Michigan as the season goes along will get better and better and better uh, I don't think this will be the year for Michigan State this year but they are a, a, a tough team to play uh, year in and year out and they can definitely compete in the Big Ten Matt, go ahead. You talked about Ohio State with their distractions. Michigan State still has the distractions. The questions about the it's possibly involving a Tony on the Heath side. And obviously, the situation involving Dark and Asher, uh, that's still moving over Michigan State's head right now. So it's not just Ohio State, the Big Ten. It's got uh, off the field or adversity that they've got to worry about and have to deal with on a regular basis. I'd be curious to see how that affects them as the season gets going. Guys, let's look at Stanford. Obviously, uh, that's Andrew Luck's alumni. Uh, anytime we can talk about Andrew Luck, uh, it, it feels like he hasn't thrown a football since college, but he is throwing for football now. But that's getting us off in the weeds a little bit. Stanford's uh, number 13 in the uh, uh, college uh, coaches' uh, 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 poll. A uh, little pun on words. They're, they love to have Bryce Love back at uh, Stanford, and uh, certainly uh, K.J. Costello, uh, their quarterback, welcomes back some of the top receivers in the nation. Um, uh, Rick, last year their defense kind of really wasn't what, what it should have been. I think they'll get better overall, but Stanford, what are your thoughts? Well, they got the Heisman Trophy favorite in Bryce Love running back, and if he can stay healthy all year, uh, that team is going to be dangerous. Uh, they're actually my – pick to, to win the Pac-12. I think they're. I think it's going to be another year where Washington's not going to be able to get it done against Stanford. Uh, I think where they're ranked right now is actually a little bit low. They should probably be out there a little closer to the top 10. I don't think they're exactly a, quite a top 10 team, but maybe move up to about that 12. You know, maybe even they might even be a, a notch above Notre Dame right now at, you know, at 11, but they sh- it should be a, I think they'll probably be a top 10 team at season's end. Uh, I, that's why I feel because I think their defense could be really good. And just having Bryce Love is, is such such a dynamic player. He's high as a trophy favorite, and uh, you know David Shaw is is consistently one of the best coaches year in and year out in college football. And we always hear about him possibly taking the next step to the NFL every year. Uh, but Stanford beats you up up the middle. They're tough, strong running games. It's that power running games, that Jim Harbaugh philosophy, and it works at Stanford because uh, they actually have good quarterback play there, too. So Stanford's actually my favorite in the Pac-12, and I think their ranking right now is just a little bit low. Matt, go right ahead, sir. We'll learn a lot about Stanford in the first two weeks. So they got a couple silver arrows that they got to avoid. San Diego State is a very underrated team in the Mountain West, and then they've they got to play USC the following week. So those two games uh, – they're going to be put to the test right now, and if they get out to a fast start there, that could be very telling if they could be a certain threat uh, for one of those four spots in the playoff. 
You're listening to the Balance Special Preview of Breaking Rank. Starts August 22nd, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Wednesday for your weekly dose of college football. Executive producer of the Balance, Rick Riggin, will be your host. I will be your co-host. Mo from the BS Sports Show will be with us on a regular basis. Uh, Matt will join us when he can to talk some Notre Dame. We will give you up-to-date on college football every single week. 917-889-8516 is is our digits. If you want to give us a call, talk some college football with us today, or give us your thoughts on Urban Meyer, feel free, uh, more than welcome to do so. Now let's go to Michigan that has the most overpaid, overrated coach. Uh, There's a lot on the table for him. He has to prove himself this year. And Jim Harbaugh, although I like Jim Harbaugh, don't get me wrong, he's a former Colt. uh, So there's reasons to like Jim Harbaugh, uh, but he has not lived up to his paycheck there at Michigan. One would hope uh, that the transfer from uh, uh, the guy from Mississippi, Mississippi, uh, Shea Patterson, will help them out a lot. They they are really inexperienced. They're having struggles against Michigan State and Ohio State. And honestly, I don't look for them to do very well this year. And honestly, I think before this season even starts, guys, Jim Harbaugh's on the hot seat. We might be on Harbaugh watch sooner than later, Rick. No. No. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that, Tom. <laughs> I think that's a seat. That first week, the first game against the Irish, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a tough game either way. If they go to Notre Dame and lose by a touchdown or less, that's not going to put him on the hot seat whatsoever. And I think Michigan, as the season goes, is going to be just get better and better and better. And Shea Patterson is going to get more control of that offense. Uh, just my thing, and I'm just probably just speaking as an Irish fan, I just don't think that's going to happen week one. But it's going to depend on, like we said a little bit ago, if that offense at Notre Dame can get going against that great defense at Michigan. But that could be the key factor also, that if the Irish can't get going on defense, offense because of that, that defense, defense is going to win them the game. I, I I don't see Harbaugh being on any hot seat this year whatsoever. And we even talked about this with Mole last week. If they go 8-4 and four again, uh, that's not going to put him on the hot seat because the other thing to Jim Harbaugh is he makes the university a lot of money too. So they're not going to fire him for that. Uh, I think this is probably the year, whether Urban Myers at Ohio State or not, I think this is the year Michigan gets it done against Ohio State. You know, real quickly, and Matt, we'll get your thoughts real quickly, but, you know, here, here's the thing. Are you trying to say that Jim Harbaugh is to Michigan as to Marvin Lewis is to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals? Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> I just don't see where Harbaugh's on the hot seat. I think that is the most overstated thing that I have seen right now. They're happy with what they've got right now. They're getting a lot better than what they've had. The last couple of coaches, when Ron Vegas was there, when Brady Hope was there, and certainly when Lloyd Carr was there, because Lloyd Carr was very controversial. They're getting what they want. I do, I do not see a scenario, unless that they totally blow up and finish under 500, there's no way Jim Harbaugh is going to be fired at the end of this year. Guys, number 15 in the coaches poll, Southern California. Uh, it's likely to, to defenses to be led by uh, defensive lineman Christian Rector and linebacker Cameron Smith. Now that becomes uh, the strength of the Trojans after the departure of uh, quarterback Sam Darnold uh, with no significant experience in that position. So we'll see how, how they turn out. Uh, but certainly they open up on September 1st against UNLV, which should be a, a relatively easy game for them to win. But what are your thoughts, Southern California, Rick? Well, it's going to be life without Sam Darnold, you know, with, that they've had the past couple of years. And he's the best quarterback they've had in, you know, several years. Now he's gone place with the Jets. And we saw what happened against Notre Dame last year. They got blown out. I don't remember the final score, but it's about a 30-point loss. And uh, I, I just don't think this is going to be the year for USC uh, with Washington and Stanford in, in that conference. Uh, even Washington State anymore is pretty good under Mike Leach. I just don't think USC has the uh, the talent this year uh, to get it done. So they're, they're in a little bit of an offensive rebuilding themselves. So I think that and just factored in, we don't know anything about their quarterback. So uh, I – I think Clay Helton's a pretty good coach, uh, maybe even a great coach. Uh, they always talk about him being on the hot seat the past couple of years now. I don't think that's the case either, but I don't think this is the year for USC. Go Two ahead, Matt. Two toughest schedules to open the year. 
two tough schedules to open the year with so many unknowns. I mean, UNLV is another scary opponent from the Mountain West, and then you got to go to Stanford, and then you got to go to Texas. Them winning, I'd say right now, Rick, if them winning two out of three of those first three games uh, would be a victory for them right now because this is not a team I think that the challenge. And like I said, I think their ranking is a little bit high at this point. Yeah, I agree with you. And I'm really interested in seeing that that game against Texas. And uh, you're number two uh, under Tom Herman in Texas. Uh, I'm not re- interested to see how Texas has, has improved. If, if USC can go two and three, uh, in those first three games, uh, then I'm getting a little scared about their uh, game against Notre Dame later in the year. All right, guys. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something else. Number 16, the coach is Paul TCU. This should be another overachieving season for the Horned Frogs. Uh, certainly the defense is the back backbone uh, there. TCU uh, didn't quite make it to the playoffs, but they did make a lot of noise in college football last year. I expect them to do that again this year, Rick. Yeah, they seem to have this hump they can't get over where they pretty great on defense and uh, good on offense. Gary Patterson puts together solid teams, but they have a hump they can't get over in big games, and they lose these big games late, and it knocks them out of the playoff contention, knocks them out of the top ten. And then now you're looking to talk for now. We're talking about preseason favorites to a three and four loss uh, a team in TCU. I expect more, much more of the same uh, this year, but we don't know how – good Oklahoma is really going to be without Baker Mayfield and some IGP Ryan and these guys they lost so it, maybe they can get it turned around maybe they can beat Oklahoma maybe they can win some of these uh, big 12 matchups late in the year And uh, but I'm thinking it's kind of more the same 3-4 losses for a TCU that back to back games against Ohio State and then at Texas I just do not see how they win both of those games I mean Ohio State with or without Meyer, is going to find a way. And, again, primetime television, possibly for both of these contests. Uh, Gary Patterson's a great coach, but I don't know if the team and the ability that they can get players is going to be enough to get them through both of those games, uh, being able to avoid uh, putting an L behind one of them. All right, guys, number 17 in the college football coaches poll. Virginia Tech, 9-4. and four. Quarterback Josh Jackson looks to blossom in his second season as the starter, especially if number one option steps up at wide receiver. I'm sorry. There are major holes to fill, though, uh, Rick, uh, uh, in the secondary with several significant departures. What are your thoughts on Virginia Tech? Virginia Tech and New York. So, uh, I think they're going to be a tough team. I don't think they're going to be able to go to Clemson by any means for the conference, but they're going to be in the upper half of the conference. The game comes in and is against them. That's going to be a tough game for Notre Dame. That's a tough game for anybody playing Blacksburg. It's one of the toughest places to play. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about nine or ten wins. You know, Okay, you're cutting out on us there, Rick. I apologize. Go ahead, Matt. The opener against Florida State is going to be tough for them. And uh, Bill the shoes of Frank Beamer the way he has done so far. I'd say he has done a remarkable job. And I'm surprised his name is not mentioned as far as, you know, big coaching jobs elsewhere, possibly. If those openings come in, I'm surprised that name's not being mentioned in Justin Fuente. Hey, Rick, we'll go back to you. Do you got us? Uh, do you have me? We do. All right. Go ahead. Uh, finish your right. finish your statement, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't remember what I was saying now. Uh, I was just okay. saying, you know, I don't think they're going to be able to uh, kind of just keep up with Clemson in that in that conference. But, uh, you know, they bring in Notre Dame, and, you know, they win. If, see how Notre Dame looks up to that point. If they're, like, undefeated or whatever, and Virginia Tech can get a, a win against undefeated Notre Dame, that's really going to boost them in the rankings. Uh, but I, I don't see them winning the uh, – the ACC this year, but they're going to be there. They're going to be one of the uh, – obviously, they're going to be one of the top teams in the ACC, and I agree with Matt. Uh, I love what Justin Fuentes has done with, with Virginia Tech. It's been a great job. Guys, number 18 in the coaches' poll, Mississippi State. New coach Joe Moorhead is blessed with one of the most talented rosters in the SEC, except that this is the SEC, so just by association, SEC. Sucks! Uh <laughs> <laughs> With their quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald appears to be a, a perfect fit 
for the former Penn State coordinator's offense. Defensive lineman Jeffrey uh, Simmons is one of the conference's top defenders. Rick. 